Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday over here in the Atlantic. We have a new tropical depression that nobody cares about because it's moving out and following 98L out in the eastern Atlantic. Nobody cares right now. Our big focus is Hurricane Irene over here in the northwestern Bahamas, absolutely slamming the northwestern Bahamas now. Nassau is right in this island here don't know the name of the island, but the eye moved right up east of there. Looks like they may have avoided the main part of the eye wall, but there was an unofficial report mentioned by the NHC of a 100 mile per hour wind gust in Nassau. So they've been getting battered here. The eye wall is about to move over a Baco Island, and these folks are getting absolutely pummeled. And I haven't heard a whole lot about the islands down here, news reports out of there. Of course, I don't watch the TV a whole lot, but damages in here are probably going to be extensive for the folks that do live there. You can see that the eye here is a little bit clouded over, not showing up as well as yesterday. That's because Irene has been going through an eye wall replacement cycle, which happens in intense hurricanes. And it's interesting this morning because the double eye wall structure is gone, and the NHC also mentioned this in their 11 a.m. discussion. It's hard to tell whether the second eye wall replace the first one or whether the second eye wall disappeared and the first one has now re-emerged because it's rather small at 15 numerical miles across according to the hurricane hunters which means that the eye is already contracted back into a good size for intensification so eventually we could see this close off and have the eye clear out a little bit as this moves north northwest and tries to intensify some more. You can see that yesterday I showed you how it was really dry on the western side. Rain bands were non-existent in the places where they should have been. You can see that has changed. We have rain bands actually scraping Miami here and West Palm Beach in eastern Florida and we have more rain on the western side of the system. And You can see the upper level outflow. See the cirrus clouds out here. Just beautiful outflow coming out on the western side of the system. So this storm has really filled out and has become a lot more symmetrical. There is still some dry air getting entrained and we can see that on the sounding from Miami this morning. These, uh, the red line is the temperature sounding with height and the green line is the dew point sounding with height. Where they are separated by a good margin the air is dry and we can see that above about the 800 millibar level which is about 6,000 feet it is actually pretty dry in the mid atmosphere. So there is some still some dry air getting entrained into the storm, but we should see this continue mixing it out enough to be able to strengthen a little bit, and it's a cat three right now, 951 millibars. We could see this still get up to a cat four. The NHC has backed off of that, but I still think we could see this get up to a low end cat four at peak intensity. Here's the water vapor imagery showing Irene again extensive outflow all the way out around the system here a little bit limited in the southwest quad but we can see what's going on here we have an upper low over eastern Gulf of Mexico which is backing away here and helping the outflow to expand on the eastern side this is always a pattern when a when an upper low is backing away from a tropical system you watch for them to start expanding that outflow and helps them strengthen here we have a shortwave trough moving across the northeastern U.S. here and this will be propagating up and then out out here, well more like this, and will be not an issue for recurving the system because it's going to leave and we have another one coming behind which is going to be the main feature that helps bring Irene right out here and we're going to be talking about the exact track this has now really solidified and the models are now on top of my track from yesterday which was east of the west rather of the model consensus yesterday the models and the NHC are now on top of what I had which is still a landfall in eastern North Carolina here over the Outer Banks here northeast of Wilmington and then up across the eastern coastline of New Jersey and into western Long Island here. This is the kind of track that could affect everybody along the eastern seaboard here. All the people in this region would get a great fistful of this storm if this were to happen. Countless dozens of millions of people live in this area which means even a weakening storm coming into New England and the eastern seaboard is a very bad situation for these folks here. This is the NHC track again, keeps it a cat three into North Carolina, a big deal, yes. I think we could get more of a cat four in this area and we'll have to see how strong it can remain before moving into North Carolina because although drier entrainment, shearing, and a slightly cooler water are going to be all negative factors as this comes ashore, the European model and most of the global models for that matter show a main a storm that's maintaining strength through this area and the European has been taking this into the 920 millibar range at North Carolina for a very consistently long time 
on most of its runs. It'll be interesting to see if that verifies. It's one of the strongest I have ever seen the European make a hurricane outside of Igor last year out in the middle of the Atlantic. So it'll be interesting to see how strong she gets here. Hopefully she will indeed be weakening a little bit, but we're still talking about a major hurricane hit in eastern North Carolina. Mandatory evacuations have already gone into effect in the Outer Banks. So folks are taking this seriously, which is a good thing. And look at what the NHC has here. Category 2 over extreme southeast Maryland. This is something we do not see every day, folks. This is a bad situation. We're talking about Category 2 impacts from Maryland all the way up to Atlantic City, New York City, and tropical storm force winds extending all the way out into Philadelphia, D.C., and Boston based on the track here. And we're talking about a lot of rainfall in here. The ground has been saturated in recent weeks from all the rainfall New England has had. This kind of a track right up the coast is something we do not see every day. The last big hurricane came to do this was Bob in 1991, and the storms that were like him, Gloria in 85, Floyd in 99 was a tropical storm up here, but all these storms were over a billion dollars in damage at least in these in this area. So this is nothing to sneeze at, and folks in here should be preparing, making preparations for this storm. We are talking about three days away. Slight shifts may occur, but the overall track here is locked in. We've talked about the reasoning for this, and we're going to go over it one more time here and why this should come up west, which is why yesterday my track was still west of the model consensus. Here is Irene down here, 24 hours on the GFS, 500 millibar map here. We have the short wave that's currently coming across the eastern U.S. starting to lift out here and you can see that number two is getting ready to come out of central Canada and you can see the Atlantic Ridge, the Bermuda High here is very strong and the weakness is right here over North Carolina so this storm is moving directly north at this point. 48 hours you can see that the next short wave in line is coming. Heights are high over here and this is moving up towards North Carolina. We go out to 72 hours, and the short wave is passing by pretty far to the north. Notice that, you, that the jet stream is over Canada here, not over New England. And you can see that, look at how strong the jet stream is right over southeast Canada here. This is one heck of a jet, and the way you get a jet stream that strong is to have resistance to the trough. You have the trough here, you have to have resistance from the south, and the way you get resistance is to have a lot of ridging over here. And you can see how strong the ridge is, lots of high heights, east of New England here, which means that the storm is going to tend to move north and not cut off to the east like this because of all this ridging sitting off to the east here. And with this jet stream to the north, this storm is just going to try to phase north right into the trough here. So this is not something that will curve out to see like this, scraping Cape Cod and leaving a lot of people relatively untouched. No, this is coming right up the corridor here right into the eastern seaboard states, mid-Atlantic and New England, a track that is not too great. 12 hours later, 84 hours, we're talking about it over Cape May on the GFS, and this is something that the models have all trended towards. Now it will be weakening as it comes ashore. We've got the Gulf Stream in here bringing 28 Celsius waters currently Irene is over 30 Celsius waters in the Bahamas. She'll be over 28 Celsius moving into the Carolinas. And then north of the Gulf Stream here, it gets really cold really fast, down to 23 to 24 degrees Celsius before it, the hurricane reaches Long Island. It takes 26 degrees Celsius to support a tropical cyclone when they're developing. So this will be weakening as it comes in, but it is a very large storm. The NHC said in their discussion that it would be slow to weaken, and that is a very apt observation. We're talking about a large storm that has a very large area of low pressures. Overall, the air mass in this storm is a lot less. There's a lot less air mass in this area of the world than there would be with a smaller storm, which means that it takes more air to fill this void that the hurricane is creating. It takes more air to fill the void, which means it takes longer for the pressure to rise and therefore longer for the winds to die down. So as this comes up the coast here, this is going to be a rattler for all these areas in here, and we may not see it weaken below hurricane intensity until it's already inland over New England. And again, we could be talking about a Category 2 near the Mid-Atlantic states. This is something that could be one of the greater storms that we have seen in recent memory in this area. And the track is pretty spot on at this point. I don't expect it to shift very much. And regardless of a couple dozen mile shifts, the impacts are going to be relatively the same in here. Very heavy in this area. And of course, North Carolina is about to get impacted by this first with hurricane force winds possibly trying to get as far west as Wilmington and then extending all the way up the coast here as this comes through. So hopefully folks are preparing for this and getting ready for this potentially historic storm to, uh, in the next few days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.